Uh, we are taking a look at um, the section 3.2, uh, which is about exponential functions and their graphs. And we should just start off by um, defining an exponential function. All right, an exponential function is in the form of f of x equals a to the power of x. Right, uh, where x is a real number and your a has to be greater than zero and it also cannot equal one. Uh, some examples could be something like f of x equals two to the power of x, or maybe f of x equals one over two to the power of x, or something like f of x maybe equals 3.57 to the power of x. Uh, notice that these are different um, to just exponent uh, these are different to something like let's say x to the power of 3 equals f of x because on this side the exponent is a variable, right? And over here, exponent is a number, right? Uh, so really, uh, they're definitely different, or even another one. All right, so understand that they're definitely different, okay? Okay, um, so what you start off on your homework is um, uh, you'll be asked to graph some of these. Can I go ahead and go to the next page, or are you still copying? Oh, I'm still copying. Okay. And y2 plus x equals 3 to the power of So these have the variables of a number? variables or a number on the bottom one on the right side yeah the on, on this, on, I'm sorry on the left side I'm not on the right side okay. see how these are numbers these are letters so they're definitely different all right okay so what we're gonna do first is um, You'll be asked to graph some of these. <laughs> uh, so in order to graph, we just need to make ourselves a little table here, right? So we have X, we have Y. All right, we're gonna try a couple of numbers here. How about zero, how about negative? Um, how about zero? How about one? How about two? How about three? We'll try negative one, negative two, and negative three. Oh, uh, uh, 
Is this the same as uh, 3.1 or different? It's the same as the video we were just watching. So I want you to go ahead and answer them for me. What is true to the power of zero? What's true to the power of one? What's true to the power of two? To the power of three? To the power of negative one? Um, true to the power of negative two? To the power of negative three? Go ahead and complete that. So pull out your calculator and put those in there. Uh, okay. Y is one on the first one. Okay. Y is four. Oh, sorry. Y is four on the on the third one. This one is. Uh, y is two on the second one. Okay. Y is four on the third one. Uh -huh. Y is eight on the fourth one. Mm -hmm. One and a half on Y in uh, negative one. So One fourth. Good job. And this one is one eighth. Good. All right. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at these. And also, um, let's just change those fractions to decimals just to help us a little bit there. Okay. Oh, okay. So zero point five. Okay. Zero point twenty five. Uh huh. And zero point. So oh, what is that again? <laughs> it's like a. Oof. I'm not good with remembering all these decimals. <laughs> so what is it? Zero point one two five. One two five, yeah. So if we were to graph these, our first one is zero one, right? Yes which is zero, one. Our next one is one, two, All right, which is one, two. Next one is two, four, which is two, three, four. It looks like it's right here. Next one is a three and the eight, three. It looks like it really goes up now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, so maybe somewhere over here. Then we get an interesting. Now what we see, this is like a negative one, and what did we say? A 0 0.5, huh? Yeah. So negative, no, somewhere right here. This is a negative two, and it looks like a 0 0.25, so it's half of that. Okay. So now it gets smaller, or smaller right here. So, so does that mean the other point is in the middle, or it's really on two? I'm sorry? That means... It's that, really on two? Negative. It's closer. It's closer, isn't it? Oh, it's closer. Okay. It's closer to zero. Right? That means that that point is, is even closer to this negative two. Not on it, but closer. Then negative three, it's even closer to zero. So it's even lower. What this graph looks like when we connect all these dots is something like this. Oh, it's light curve. It gets really, really close to zero, right? And something that you learned on that last exam is that you see that it ends up having a horizontal asymptote. Mm. Okay. So that's what you call a horizontal asymptote. Yeah. So this is what this graph looks like. And as a matter of fact, this is what all the graphs of exponential functions look like. 
right? So uh, we can really generalize it. Right, we could say that these are gonna look something like this. Or maybe something like that. And it's really gonna depend on your A. Remember, it looks something like this, as we mentioned earlier. So there's two different types? Yeah, it can look like the first one or the second one, and it depends on your, on your A, the base. If your A is greater than zero, it's going to have the characteristic of the top. And if your A is less than zero, it will have the characteristic of the ones on the bottom. Right, this is a All right so some examples maybe if it was give me a number bigger than zero eight okay so eight to the power of x maybe it would look something like that or maybe a decimal right 3.4 to the power of x oh oops wrong sign Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back, too, back too, because our A cannot. Our A has to equal zero, or this one is if our A um, is between. This one is your A is between uh, Z is. Your A has to be greater than zero, but also let me let me rewrite this. How about A is between between zero and one? So the sign was wrong, or it's correct, but you got to say it differently. No, it's it's going to be different as well. Looks like this. And this one here can actually be when your A, and the top one is when your A is greater than one. All right, so when your A is between zero and one, or in other words, uh, in that notation, it looks the other way. Right, some examples are f of x equals some really decimals, right? One over two x, 0.4x. So that gives you a little idea of what some of these exponential function graphs should look like. Uh, notice, and nonetheless, they both have these horizontal asymptotes. All right, so. Uh, and you'll have more examples of graphing them, but no matter what, it should have these kind of graphs on them, okay? Oh, okay. So just taking a look at a quick example here, uh, I mean, by understanding that, what if I asked you to graph Uh, y equals negative 4 to the power of x. Okay? And I give you these options. Apparently, the options would be B or C, right? B or C? 
B or C because it's going this way and that way. Well, let's take a look. And keeping in mind that if we take a look at these graphs, uh, at this, let's go back to our whiteboard. Mm -hmm. um, these two, this is an example when A is bigger than one. This mm -hmm. is an example when A is between zero and one. But oh. our A in our example is what? It's a negative. Is a negative. So it's a difference. It can't be either one of these. Oh, okay. Right? So it can't be either one of those. So it's not B or C. It's got to be A or D. Yes, very good. New whiteboard. Let me go back. Right. So right away, we know that it can't be B and it can't be C. It's not those two. Not those two. So it's got to be either A or D, right? Okay, going back. Let's go back to our whiteboards. All right, let's come back over here. I showed you the example when A is greater than one, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if our A is less than one, or our A is a, let's say, your A is less than negative one, which means on your number line, here's negative one and your A can be any of these. Then it's gonna be looking like this. And if your A <laughs> is between zero and negative one, right, then it's going to have like this characteristic. If A is between zero and negative one, uh-huh. So now that you see that, what graph are you going to pick then? Uh, it's between... What's your A value on that problem? It's between... It's between eight and negative one. What's the I'm a? Sorry, zero and negative one. What's the a value on that problem? Negative four. Is negative four between zero and negative one? Mm. Oh wait, no, not in between. That's supposed to be less than negative one. Yeah. So then, what's the answer you're gonna pick? You're going to have to pick A, is it? Well, no. I forgot what. So D? Yes. I didn't write down the question. <laughs> All right, so it is D. Once again, you can easily say because your A is less than negative one, or you can make your table. So whatever you want to show um, is appropriate for the exam. Okay, so uh, let's continue on then. All right, uh, let's take a look at uh, the number E. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question about that one.
So let's take a look here. Um, this number E is a constant. And it's something around 2.718281828418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418418
the next one would be what? Zero point. Oh, hold on. Second e negative one. Zero point three six seven. Yeah, we'll say three six eight. Okay. Mm. Three. Oh yeah, three six eight. And the next one. Mm -hmm. Oops. One. Good. And the next one. Two point seven one eight. Good. And then the last one. The last one is seven point three eight nine. Very good. And we should also be able to graph these, right? So oh. x is negative two. If this is one, we get a really small number. Yes, but negative how do you one. solve it if it's a decimal? We're just we're just kind of estimating. Oh. Right. But what you see still, right? This is two, that's three, somewhere up here. Four, five, six, seven, eight is up here. But what you st still see nonetheless is that same kind of characteristic. Okay. Uh, which makes sense because once again, this is a number, right? right? Recall that your E is just, as we said a little earlier, two point something, right? So you're really graphing is you're graphing something like F of X equals 2.7 to the power of X, right? And this is, um, your A is positive, right? And as we saw earlier, it has that characteristic. So some very nice examples of graphing um, some of these. Now uh, let's take a look um, at some of these application problems. Yes, that's one I have trouble with. All right, so um, let's take a look at maybe example nine. It says we have this function h of t equals 80,000 uh, 46.65 uh, times 1.0429 to the power of t. where t is the number of years after 2016. All right, we want to use the function Project the population in twenty twenty and twenty fifty two. Project the population. Oh, 2022 and 20, 50. 2052? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, so let's start off with A. In 2022, that's what we're looking for, okay? So that means subtracting... 
That means subtracting 2052 and 2016 together? That will give us our T. Okay. What do we get? Uh, hold on. I'm still typing. Uh, subtracted by 2016. Oops. What is wrong with my hand? Okay. Six. Good. So now all we do is you plug that into our into our function. We're going to replace this t with six, and we just put that in the calculator. All right, that's going to be a long number to type. Yep, and you just have to be careful. All right, do I put the parentheses as well? Yep. Exactly, you sure do. Uh, zero four. Six six five one point zero four two nine close parentheses open parentheses six is it oh do I times this? No, just to the power of six. Just to the power of six, okay. Power of six. You should get a big number. Yes, one zero two nine nine zero. Oh, careful. Looks like oh yeah, one zero two. What? One zero two nine nine. Uh huh. Zero nine. Isn't there a point? Seven. Hold on. Is it one zero two? Nine nine zero is there a point after that zero? No. Did I calculate it wrong? Hold on, I think I calculated it wrong. Do you have a different number, Mr. Santoyo? Oh. Yes. I have a I have a decimal in there. There's a decimal right after seven. No, there's a decimal after the zero, so be careful, okay? All right, so I did get that wrong. Yeah. Uh, and because of the fact that this is a nine, this is gonna go up to a one, and this is what we get for our answer. Hmm. Okay, so be careful with your decimals and how you put it in there, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, um, and we can do the same thing for uh, 2052 if we wanted to, right? Oh, okay. Wait, should this have been like a close parenthesis and then add the power of six? Yes. I didn't do that. Okay, be careful. Um, so let's take a look at, um, and once again, I mean, 2052, you do the same thing, right? It still gave me the same number. Something's going in wrong, Miriam, but we got to continue because we only have so much time, okay? All right. So let's try 2052. How do we find what our T is? What are we going to do? We have to find by... Let's go with 2022 subtracted by 2... 2052. Subtract oh, from 2052 20. subtracted by 2016. Yep. And what do we get yeah. that to equal? That would be by 2016. It would be 30, 36. Okay. And once again, we plug it into the into that equation. into that function, right? So you get 80, 0, 46.65, open parentheses, 
four two nine close parentheses to the power of thirty two. What's going on with my computer? And it should be a pretty big number. Do you have 36? I'm sorry. It's not 32, Marianne. It's 36, isn't it? Yeah, it's 36. Yeah, I don't know why I put 32. Uh... I got 363. Uh huh. One, four, four. Point two, six, four, eight. And because that's two, that stays the same. So our answer is three, six, three, one, four, four. I don't know why it keeps on putting it like in a different way from yours. Are you putting the decimal? Is it one point zero four two nine? Yes. I've been putting the decimal. Are you putting, is it 80046.65? It keeps on giving me differently, like uh, the decimal is not in front of the two, it's uh, you're not putting it in there the right way then. Yeah, it's giving me the wrong number. I don't know what I typed in wrong. Uh, Start over, try it again. Is there supposed to be a decimal right in between 80 and 04? No. Mm, I don't know what it's wrong. Okay, uh, let me try again. Uh, six decimal sixty five, right? Point sixty five. So it's point sixty five one point zero four two nine to the power of thirty six. Okay, I got it now. Okay, good. All right, so let's go ahead and continue and look at the next problem here. I think we'll have time for one more. All right. Um, uh, so number 10. Well, what's this number nine we were working yep. on? Mm -hmm. All right, example number 10. I think 10 is the same kind of idea. It says here, demand for lumber is increased exponentially. Um, and it gives us this function. Right, it gives us a function of n of t equaling 54, open parentheses, 1.018, close parentheses, t. It tells us that when t is zero, uh, it corresponds to the year 1997. 1997. Uh-huh. So, is that the year that it's showing or is there another year we have to like subtract it to? Well, it wants us to find how much was consumed 
the question here is how much was consumed in 1998. Okay. In 1998. So we have to subtract 1998 with 1997. If we subtract 1998 from 1997, what does that give us? One. <laughs> it was one, right? So yeah. let's plug that in. Oh, we still do the arrow up, right? Yep. All right. Zero, one, eight, two, 54.972. Okay. Good, and let's round to two decimal places. So it'd be 54 point, because that's a two, this seven stays the same. Um, two decimal places? Yeah, we're rounding to the hundreds. Oh. Hundreds. So that would be fifty-four point ninety-seven. Mm -hmm. Just these. Good. Okay. And how about one more? How much was consumed in two thousand? In two thousand. Now that would be 2,000 subtracted by 1997. Mm -hmm. That would be three. Good. And once again, we just plug it in. I messed up on that. Five, four. Fifty six point nine six eight. Good, and if we round to the hundreds, is that to eight? This six goes up, right? So that would be 56.978. No, just 97. Or just 97. Nine okay. No. Okay, so these are some nice examples of your uh, 3.2 uh, homework.